Hi gang, in this video, we are going to make a seamless repeat camouflage pattern as requested by a couple of students from Cypress College. This is easy, I promise. Before we get started though, please give this video a like to help me keep my channel going. Let's get started. All right, here's the important trick. We are gonna use a filter, and in order to get this filter to give us a seamless repeat, we have to open our file in a very specific size. Your file size has to be a power of two. Now I know that's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not a math person myself, so I Googled it, and I got a few numbers that were the power of two. A few that you might want to use in the future are 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 2048. I'm going to open a file that is 4096 by 4096. So let's do that. File, new, and I'm going to make sure that it's set to pixels. And then we're going to go 4096 by 40. 96. Oh, and by the way, this does not have to be a square file. It can be a rectangle as long as both of the numbers you use are a power of two. But I'm going with, I'm going with a square because I like working with squares. I'm going to change my resolution to 300. So it's a high res file and we can use it for a lot of different options. Click create and let's get started. Now you always want to start by using black and white. So if you hit D on your keyboard for default, it will restore your black and white colors. And now we can start working. We're going to start by adding a filter. And that one is filter, render, clouds. And you're going to get something that looks like this. If you're not happy with the pattern that was generated, you can easily go back up to filter and just click the clouds button again, and it will regenerate. And you can do this as many times as you like. The next thing we're going to do is run threshold on this. Image, adjustments, threshold. And this is going to turn our pattern into a mix of black and white with very hard edges. You can control the mix by dragging the slider to get more white or more black. I personally, to start, like to keep it in the middle to get a nice balance. We're going to click OK. And now you have something like pony spots but we want camo. Go back up to filter, select blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna add a blur to this. Now, I can't tell you exactly how much, but the idea is to soften the edges enough so that we can turn these into blobs. So here is about um, what I like to do, and it looks like my radius at this size is 22 pixels. We'll click OK. Now we're going to run threshold again to sharpen these up. Image, adjustments, and threshold. And again, I kind of like the default, which is pretty much in half for this. And you can see now they're much blobbier shapes. Click OK. If you wanted them even rounder than this, you would have brought your blur up higher. So let's start by coloring this. I'm going to grab my paint bucket to do this. But before you get started, it's important that you have the settings correct. You want your opacity at 100. The default tolerance for this is 32, and that's just fine. We want anti-alias checked, and we want contiguous and layers unchecked. Here's why. Contiguous means touching, and we don't want to click on one of these little black areas and fill it, but none of the other ones. We want to fill it universally, which means all of the black spots in one click. And it's a lot easier to do that if contiguous is turned off. We're also turning off all layers because we're going to be using multiple layers and we don't want them to be affected when we're working on an upper layer. Uh, I've already set myself up with some camo colors over here to play with. So let's go ahead and give this a start. Uh, maybe we'll start with this green and I'll grab my paint bucket with the settings I just discussed and we're gonna click on the white areas and it will turn all of them that particular green. We'll grab another color and we'll click on the black areas and there's the start of our camo pattern. 
I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on the plus button at the bottom of the layers panel, and we're going to repeat the process. So again, D for default, we always want to do this in black and white. Filter, render, clouds, image, adjustments, threshold. Now for this one, rather than keeping it even, I think I want some smaller dots to lay on top of it. So I'm going to play with the slider a little bit. Click OK. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's blur this one up even a little bit more and make them really round. Click OK. Image, adjustments, threshold. And now you can see we've got a bunch more little blob shapes here. Click OK. We can choose a color to color the blobs. So let's go with, um, I'm going to go with a darker green color and again, paint bucket. But we want to remove the white so we can see through it to everything we've got below. To do that, we're going to go to the eraser tool and use the magic eraser. With the magic eraser, we want to make sure also that it's sent to anti-alias, contiguous is turned off, and sample all layers is turned off. And if I click on the white background now, it will delete it and we can see our other colors coming through. And that is how you make a camo pattern. You can create as many layers above this as you like. And you can even get a little more detailed by doing something else. And that would be duplicating this top layer. So I'm just dragging it on to the new layer icon to duplicate it. To uh, make this a little easier to see what we're doing, I'm going to click this icon here to lock the transparent pixels. What that means is anything that's currently transparent will not be filled with a color, but anything that has a color will get filled right now. So for that color, I think I'll grab a black and I'm going to use the shortcut key, which is Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill everything with black. And that's a really handy shortcut to use. It fills everything on that layer or everything that is selected with black. And that's why I locked the transparent pixels. I'm going to unlock them now. I don't need them locked anymore. And I'm going to scale this to 50%. To do that, I'll Control or Command T to transform. We're going to go up to the Control panel, and where it says Width, W, or Height, H, I'm going to change this to 50%. And as long as this little chain link is clicked, it will do it on both horizontal and vertical. And now I've got a smaller version of my details. I'm going to click this little check mark. If we go into View, and we make sure that snap to document bounds is checked, it's going to make the next step much easier to do. So with that checked, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to let it snap into place in my upper right hand corner. Then I'm going to duplicate it. There are numerous ways to do that. I can do it like I did before by dragging this onto the new layer icon, or I can hold down my alt or option key Watch till my cursor turns into a double cursor, and then I can click and drag a copy, and it'll snap right into place on the other side. To merge these two into a single layer, I'm just going to Control or Command E while I'm in the top layer, and that merges you down one layer. And now you can see they're, they're both in the same layer. We're going to do it one more time. Hold your Alt or Option key to get that double arrow, drag it down, now to the bottom, release your mouse, release the Alt or Option key, and now you can see again we've got it in two layers. So with the top layer selected, we are going to Control or Command E to merge it down. And now if you would like to, this is a good opportunity to play around with your colors a little bit. Maybe I'm not totally thrilled with the greens on this layer. So I can either lock my transparent pixels and fill it that way, or I'm going to just use my paint bucket, right? So I want to make sure that I'm in the layer. I need to choose the color that I want to try using. And maybe I'll go with one of these kind of brown colors and then grab the paint bucket and click on one of those dark greens and it will change the rest of them to the brown. Now to save this as a pattern in Photoshop, all you need to do is go up to edit 
define pattern. And that is going to turn this into a seamless repeat. So we'll label it and click OK. There's my camo pattern. Now, before we move on and talk about how to use this, I want to show you a couple of other options you can use to make different shapes. I'll turn off these top two layers. Let's change colors this time, make it a desert camo. So I'm going to grab my paint bucket and let's grab some deserty colors for this one and make sure we're in that layer. We've got the paint bucket and we'll fill the green with that color and maybe a little darker tan color for the dark green. So that's our starting point. I am once again going to hit D for default to restore my black and white colors. We're going to make a new layer and in this layer, we are going to do clouds again. So filter, render, clouds, because that is always where we need to start. But this time, instead of using the cloud filter, we're going to use difference clouds, which is going to give us a different type of pattern. So filter, render, and this time we'll select difference clouds. And you can see it is going to do this, which gives you some very different looking kind of blobby shapes. But there's another thing you can do, which is go back up to filter. And if you click difference clouds again, it gives you a slightly different kind of pattern. And just like with regular clouds, you can go back and click this difference clouds as many times as you want. I'm going to say that looks good. And we're going to repeat all the same steps. So we go image adjustments threshold. And in this case, you might want to play around with it a little bit. Right, This is giving me really small things, but if I wanted a little more 50-50, I could move the slider around, click OK, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then again, image, adjustments, threshold, click OK. Let's remove the white first with the magic eraser tool, just so we can see what it looks like with the background. And then we can decide on a color for this. We'll grab the paint bucket, and maybe not something quite so dark. We'll go for the deserty mix. We're going to do one more layer on top of this. New layer. Make sure we're in black and white. Filter. Render. Clouds. And it won't allow you to do difference clouds until you've done the cloud filter. Filter. Render. Difference clouds. I like it once and a second time. And now edit. I'm sorry. Image. Adjustments threshold. And I like those little white spots, so we're going to keep it small. Click OK. Filter, blur. You're going to be hearing me in your nightmares repeating these things this time. Gaussian blur. And there we go. Once again, image, adjustments, threshold. And we can play with the slider to make really tiny little dots or bigger ones. I'm going to go with really tiny ones. Click OK. And this time what I'm going to do is with the magic eraser, I'm going to delete the black sections. And I'm going to turn these little white spots black. And the paint bucket and click on one of my white spots. And now they're black. And we've got another really interesting version of a camo pattern. And just like before, we can go edit, define pattern. And we'll call it camo uh, sand. So let's take a look at our patterns. I've got a layout page set up, and the way you can fill your page or your item with your camo is to go down to the bottom of the layers panel and click on the black and white cookie icon. Go to pattern, and this is gonna allow you to fill with your pattern and make some adjustments. So we're gonna drop down and grab the first pattern I made, and that's at its full scale. But in this window, I also have the opportunity of adjusting the scale. So let's look at it at closer to 50% so that we can see the repeat better. And now you can see that it is a seamless repeat of this pattern. Let's check the other one out. We can either go back to the black and white cookie and repeat the same thing in order to open the new one. Or since we already have our pattern fill in this layer, we can double click on it and just swap out the pattern and there is our deserty camo pattern. So now you know how to make them and use them in Photoshop, but there is one last thing I'd like to share with you. What if you wanted to use these in Adobe Illustrator? How can we move them? 
Well, we want to work from our original swatch page, this version. But you can't just select all and copy because it'll only copy one layer from Photoshop. Flattening these layers is an option, but it's not one I recommend because you might want to go back and play with this and recolor these. So it's a good idea to save this file so that you can edit it in the future. If you flatten it, you won't have that ability. We're going to click on the topmost layer that is visible. And we're going to do Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E if you are on a Windows computer. And look what it did. It created a merged copy of all the layers below where you clicked. So we've got the merged copy, but we still have all our layers. So I can always turn this on and off, right? We can turn it off so it's no longer visible. And then I can make changes if I want to the rest of my project. So maybe I don't want this to be black. Maybe that's not the direction I go in. Maybe I want it to be white. So I can go back and make that edit. And then again, Command Option Shift E to get another merged copy of this. So it makes it easier for me to move it into Illustrator. Let's see how this looks with green. Kind of like that. All right. Now, in order to copy this into Illustrator, we need to be in the merged layer that has everything in it. And now we can select all, which is Control or Command A. We can copy, Control or Command C. And now let's move into Illustrator with this. I've got a flat ready to go. We're going to paste this in Illustrator, so Control or Command V for paste. But you'll notice that it is huge. Now, can we just make a pattern out of it at this large size? Sure, you can do that. Illustrator will not be happy. If you're not going to be using it at this size, don't make a pattern at this size. It makes Illustrator chug along and do things really slowly. Your file is likely to freeze up and you will not be pleased. What you need to do is scale this down to the size that you're actually going to be using it at before you create that pattern. You can double click on the scale tool, make sure that transform objects and patterns are both checked, and you can type in whatever you think you're scaling it down to. Let's try 25% click OK. That is a much more appropriate scale for this garment. Now we're going to take this. We will open up our swatches window. And as you can see, I've already got a few other camo patterns here. And all we need to do is drag this right into the swatches. And there is our seamless repeat camo pattern. So let's put it to use and see how it looks on these little cargo shorts. Because I have them already filled in in the same color, I can use the magic wand. So I'm going to click on my magic wand, click on the green of my shorts, and it selected all of the green. And now we can try out our new camo pattern and see what we think. And let me hide those selection lines. And the shortcut key for that is Command or Control H, just so we can see what we're doing. So there's our camo pattern in action in Adobe Illustrator. And just for fun, here's a few other ones that I have created. For this one, I used the fibers to get this kind of look, which is a little different and longer than these round blobs. And then we've got this one, kind of a traditional looking camo, similar to the one I just did, and another version of a desert camo. I hope you learned something new. If you did, I'd really appreciate you giving this video a like so I can keep my channel going. Now go forth and create camo. See you next time.